on these two commandments and all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Be your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to remember what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justice, love Mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand for the glory. First reading is taken from the Paul's second letter to Corinthians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 3. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not claim ourselves, we claim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let, shine, let light shine out of darkness. 
that shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. Why have we got the transfigure? 
decoration reading in the lectionary when we celebrated it on the 6th of August last year. You can cast your mind back to Sunday the 6th of August when we celebrated the Transfiguration. It was the day that I had the screen and the projector here and I showed you a little clip of the Transfiguration, Jesus taking those three up the mountain. It's a short clip but I still find it very moving. So why do we have the Transfiguration tucked away in this ordinary time between Epiphany and the beginning of Lent? In Mark's Gospel, the Transfiguration comes halfway between Jesus' baptism and Jesus' resurrection. We hear a voice from heaven telling Peter and James and John to listen to him. This is God telling these three disciples to listen to Jesus, that what he says is true. We may have moments like this in the church calendar when we look back, but we also look forward. We talked last month about candle mass and about how that is a day when we turn around 180 degrees with the Christmas season behind us as we turn to face the cross and travel through Lent. This week, at this halfway point in Mark's Gospel, we turn around from the baptism of Christ to face the resurrection of Christ. In other words, all these things pivot and point to a revealing of who Jesus is, that he is the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us both human and divine. And it's his divinity that is fully revealed in the transfiguration to Peter, James and John that will then become later revealed in his resurrection. The divinity that is revealed in the form of the brightness of Jesus, an inner glow that emanates outwards, clothes that shimmer and sparkle with God's grace and glory, all happening on a mountain top. Looking back at the Bible narrative as a whole, this is part of God's story. It reminds us of Moses having a mountain top experience on Mount Sinai, where again through Moses we experience divine light and that voice of God. And then turning from the Old Testament experience of the divine, we turn to look to the New Testament experience. And we find <coughs> Mary at the empty tomb on Easter day, where we are told an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. And in Luke, that deep all loving, all comforting voice of Jesus' baptism that says, You are my son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. So all the time in scripture, there are arrows and signs and way markers directing us back and pointing us forward to illuminate who Jesus is. And all this looking back and turning round and looking forward reminds me of two things. Firstly, of repentance. To repent meaning to turn around, to change direction, stop doing something that we know is not of God, but is not helpful to us or to others. And to do things God's way, the way that Jesus came to show us. And secondly, on this journey that we call life, the looking up and forwards as we climb a mountain, and the looking back to where we come from. But it's not only at the top of mountains that we can, it's only at the top of mountains that we can see our journey in its full sense. From the top of the mountain we can see where we come from and where we might go next. And in between the mountaintop experiences, there are the twisty paths of life, 
and the valleys between the mountain tops, which aren't as easy to navigate as we can't always see what's next. I can say that hand on heart as yesterday we walked from Clermont to Greg de Rec, and the path suddenly disappears and you don't know where it's going next or what's around the corner. But it's in this transfiguration experience and the words of our scripture today that we can find comfort and all that is required of us as we believe and stay faithful. Stay faithful. These are some words that have become especially poignant to me as I have recently visited someone that you all know much better than I do, <coughs> Gillian Arthur. Gillian isn't well, and she said that she would like to write something that she would like me to share with you all. She hasn't formulated her words yet, but she's thinking about what she would like to say. But what she could tell me was that she wanted you to all know to stay faithful. It's my privilege as a priest to hear people's life stories, the highs and the lows, the twisty paths, the valleys and the mountaintop experiences. But wherever we are on the journey of life and of faith, remember, stay faithful and keep your eyes and ears and hearts and minds open to the epiphanies, to God revealing himself to us. If only these epiphanies, though, were as dramatic as the transfiguration experience for Peter, James and John, it would make staying faithful a little easier. We hear in Matthew's version of the transfiguration, and again in today's, that Peter wants to hang on to this amazing experience, so much so that he wants to build things, shelters, monuments. But we can't all go around building monuments to mark our epiphany moments with God. There'd be shelters and buildings all over the place if we did. But what we can do is share our experiences with others. By sharing our mountaintop experiences and how God reveals himself to us, we can fulfil what the Corinthians reading talked about. That we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. And so by sharing our experiences of God, our lives too point to Jesus and become an encouragement and a blessing to others. And that's how we will spread our good news and the hope that Easter brings us as we journey together towards the cross. So in Julian's words, stay faithful.
Lord Jesus, our Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the greatness of your love and lift up our hearts in prayer and praise. As then to approaches, help us to pray simply, sincerely, unselfishly, and gratefully, remembering the needs of others as well as our own and giving thanks always for everything in your name. Lord, we pray today for your church and for Christians in other lands. We pray for our church here in St Mary's, for Kirsty, and we ask for your blessing on all those who serve this church. We are grateful for its worship, fellowship, nurture and love. And help us to see the kind of church you need today. And may we not lose sight of the many and various needs of this neighbour. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, let us pray for the leaders of all nations who carry a heavy burden of responsibility. Give them courage to uphold and what is right for peace and for the survival of mankind. We pray for peace in all countries where violence, war, terrorism are taking place. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for the beauty of creation. Open our eyes to see this beauty, and as the seasons change, winter gives way to spring, <clears throat> help us to safeguard our world, to enable future generations to be able to enjoy this beauty. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, pray for those who are ill and in need of your help at this time. We pray for the sick at home or in hospitals and of those awaiting consultations and treatment. We think of the elderly, the housebound and those in care homes. We pray for all those who care for them, from within the family, professional, and voluntary services. And we'll pause for a little while and to think of all those known to us, comfort and sustain, who are in need of your help at this time. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. Be with those who mourn, especially the loved ones of Ted Eckhart and Lawrence River, who both have died recently. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. As we leave church today, we give thanks for our happy days. You know, Lord Jesus, the fears and anxieties that sometimes fill our hearts at what each day we will bring. Free us from panic and worry, and anchor our thoughts and minds in your great power, and send us out into every day with peace and confidence. <coughs> Merciful Father,
Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus your Son to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join you there in heaven's song. Hope 
Thank you. 